Hi, my name is Hilary Stupa. I'm a developer with Qdabra Software and I'm here today to walk you through an introduction to QRules just to get you acquainted with the basics of this product. To use QRules, the first thing you're going to need to do is install it on your machine. If you're running Windows 7 or if you're installing this on Server 2008, you'll want to run Setup.exe as an administrator to provide the application with the proper permissions it's going to need in order to be able to run correctly. If you weren't aware of that and you've already run Setup but did not install as administrator, that's okay. You can navigate to the folder where the program installed and just run the injector as administrator the first time. You'll find shortcuts for Q rules on your start menu after installing. You can see here that I have both the trial and the full version installed. There are two InfoPath forms that come with Q rules. One is called the mapping tool that's used for the popular submit to SharePoint list command and it's used for creating a mapping file to show which field in the form goes to which column in your SharePoint list. The other form that comes with QRules is a sample form. It's filled with great ideas of how you can implement the commands that QRules uses. You can install these full trust forms by using this shortcut that runs a Windows script. However, if you have any permission errors when you run the install form script from the start menu, you can navigate to the forms folder in your program files and you can try running it from here or you can start a command prompt as administrator and then navigate to the script and run from there. For more information on installing those forms using any of these methods, please check the user guide that installs with QRules. You'll find instructions for the full trust forms on about page 3 as of version 3.4. In the end, if you are unable to install these full trust forms, you can, of course, always just open them in design mode, resave them locally, and preview them in order to see the functionality. Once QRules has been installed on your machine, you can run the injector to add QRules to a form template. You can specify a path to the solution you wish to inject using the Browse button. You can hand type it in. You can drag and drop your template there. Um, as you can see, the injector does detect what version of InfoPath and what compatibility the form file currently is. If, for instance, you'd intended to use a 2007 InfoPath form and you had saved it as 2010, you can manually change these items and then resave your template after you open it again. You do want to make sure your form template is closed when you inject it. What this particular tool is doing is unpacking your form as source files. It's adding a data connection to them and it's adding the compiled code DLL that makes up the QRules commands. So in order to do those things, your form template does need to be closed. We click the inject button and you'll see we get a little warning about backing up your form. That's important because you may decide that you don't wish to use QRules and it'll be easier for you if you already have a copy of your form without it injected. You can manually remove QRules from your form if you so wish. There's more information on that in the user guide. As you can see, we've injected successfully. There's information in this window as to what exactly was done and you're welcome to read through that. One way I can tell that my form has been injected with QRules is that there's a secondary data connection to the Qdabra rules data source. I'm going to drag and drop that over here. You'll find this to be very useful, especially when you're first getting accustomed to QRules. Sometimes we return information to this result node. We mark the success node true when a command succeeds. The error node will be populated with any errors that occur when your command runs. The command node is the heart of QRules. There's a changed event on this command node, so every time it changes, the code that's included with QRules executes within your form and it operates on the information that's been provided to it within this command node. Upon execution, it then clears the command node whether the command ran successfully or failed so that it's ready for the next command. After previewing my form, there's a quick and simple way to test QRules and make sure it's up and running correctly. I like to use the generate GUID command for that type in generate GUID and when I tab out of the field you can see a new unique identifier has been returned to the result node. 
so I know QRules is working correctly. Another quick command is the clear errors command. You can see this field up here is marked as cannot be blank, so right now my form data is in an invalid state. If I enter clear errors, you can see that now this is no longer marked as cannot be blank. It's cleared the validation error. If we enter a command incorrectly or with the wrong parameters, we'll get an error message back from QRules. As you can see, we've gotten an error message back. Basically, it says, here's the correct usage for the set value command. Anytime you see a parameter in these square brackets, that means it's optional. And what we're calling a parameter in QRules always starts with a forward slash. It's the name of the parameter, an equal sign, and then the value you wish to pass in. So we can see here that for set value, at the very least, I need to include the XPath parameter with the XPath of the field I wish to set. In this view of my form, I've added a repeating table. We're going to try the set value command again. I've written out the command I'm going to use in Notepad. It might be a little easier to read here than when I put it in the form. So this is just a hard-coded command. I'm just going to set the value of the command field to this. Basically, I'm using the set value command. For the XPath parameter, I'm saying I want to set the value of field 4, and I want to set the value of field 4 where field 3 is equal to B and I want to set it to Z. So let's copy that into our form. And you can see I've got one row here where I've got a value of B, and this, you're just going to have to trust me on this, is field 3. So as I tab out, you can see that this row got set to, to Z. So let's insert a couple more items, and let's put this one as B, and this one is, as D clear that guy out. And if we run that command again, so as you can see, the set value command is letting us set specific values in specific rows in our repeating table, something that we can't do in InfoPath out of the box. Of course, that's kind of an artificial scenario, isn't it? It's very rare that you're going to know which fields you want to set based on a hard-coded value, and it's very rare that you're going to want to set it to another hard-coded value. It's more likely there's going to be information in the form itself that's going to provide you with the knowledge you need in order to be able to set the values correctly. You're going to notice in your user guide that some of the examples directly set the value of the command field, and some of the examples use a concat formula. We need to make sure that we're setting the command field to the correct value for what we want it to do. And so we can use a concat formula for something like that. For example, in this case, I'm going to use a concat formula for my set value formula. And I'm going to say, I would like the instances of field 4, where field 3 is equal to the value of field 1, to be set to the value of field 2. Now this is maybe a little bit hard to understand when you see it written out as a formula in the formula editor. So I'm going to put this in an expression box. You can see what that formula is going to look like. Calculated value in InfoPath 2010. I've had a hard time getting used to that verbiage change. So I'm just going to paste my formula here. And you can see now I've got an expression box here. Now this is exactly the same command that's going to run on the click of this button. QRules commands can be run on the click of a button. They can be run on the change of a field. It's up to you, whatever makes sense for your form logic. So here's the form open and preview again. And again, I've got two fields that are a value of B. Now you can see what our command is thus far. We're saying set the X path where field 3 at this point equals blank to a blank value. But remember, we're passing in field values there. So I'm going to say uh, my field 1 value is B. And the value that I'm going to set things to is field 4. So now you can see in this same concat syntax what the command I'm going to run is when I click this button. I'm basically sending in the set value command. I'm setting the XPath parameter to select all instances of field 4 where field 3 is equal to B, which is what my field 1 is right now. And I'm setting the value to just a little bit of text. So I'll go ahead and click the button. And you can see that our two instances that match the letter B up here were indeed set. And so we can change this to try something else, you know, new value. 
and as I tab out you can see how my command has changed that's because I'm using a concat formula the command node doesn't care how the text gets there it just cares what the text is so if we click the button again you can see C gets set that's also a great method for troubleshooting your commands. If you have a command that doesn't seem to be doing what you'd like, or it's giving you an error message, one thing you can do is put an expression box on your form in a place where you'll get the correct value for whatever's being set to your command. So if, for example, my command was firing in a rule off of field 4, I may want to set my expression box in the same repeating table as field 4 so I can be quite sure what my X path is doing and what's being provided to the command field. Um, you can add a dialog box that pops up with the value of the command field. Sometimes I'll set a forms compatibility from browser to filler just so that I can use dialog boxes and then I'll pop them up with the value of the command field. You can just set that rule directly on the command field. Let's look quickly at a few of the other nodes here in the data source. Uh, the version just tells you what version of Q rules you've got installed finish loading gets set to true when the form load events are finished. You may know if you've done any programming in InfoPath that rules run before code and this is a code-based product and so form load rules don't always work correctly because Q rules hasn't finished loading when you start running Q rules commands therefore to simulate loading rules you can add those to the finish loading node when finish loading equals true then you know the forms completely loaded and Q rules is ready to go the command node as we talked about that's the heart the result we return all kinds of information there so keep an eye on it while you're learning about Q rules the success node is marked as true when the command succeeds and the error node returns error messages if you're using the trial version of Q rules and your trial has passed its expiration date Q rules will stop working in the tr in the templates that you've injected this doesn't make any other changes to your templates but you will find that the Q rules functionality you'd enabled is no longer functional a message is returned to the error node about the fact that the trial has expired. Now, if at that point you decide to purchase the full version of QRules, you simply need to install QRules on your machine and then re-inject your form template with the full version. All of your commands will then continue to work. I hope this has helped you get a deeper understanding of QRules, how it works, and how to get started with it. I know that the user guide can be a little intimidating, it's rather long, but that's simply because there's so many different commands available. Our hope is that you'll be able to use these commands like building blocks in order to add complex logic to your forms. Get started with some of the simpler ones, solve one or two specific problems in your forms, and before you know it, you'll be an old hand with QRules. Be sure to post questions on our forum. We keep a close eye on the QRules forum and we're here to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.